Yo, well, Snapchat, so the Hyperloop might actually bring about a Eurasian Union, an economic and political union between the EU, Russia, and China. And that will have a dramatic influence on the future of this planet. This guy's following me. <laughs> oh, can I keep him? Ah, I'm trying to find somewhere out of the wind. So anyway, today uh, Russian billionaire and Vladimir Putin backed the idea and they signed an MOU, a memorandum of understanding, with um, Hyperloop One, which is one of the big Hyperloop companies. And Vladimir was quoted as saying that the Hyperloop will fundamentally change the global economy. And he's not wrong, because yeah, it's a huge, huge thing. Okay, so to back up, the Hyperloop is a fundamentally new type of transport technology that uses kind of like uh, vacuum tubes with pods inside, um, which means it can reach speeds of 760 miles per hour, or like 1200 kilometers per hour. It was first devised by Elon Musk, of course, maybe like a year or two ago, um, and his team worked out the physics of it and released a white paper and basically said like, hey, anyone who wants to go build this, go and build it. And since then, two, two major companies have emerged. So there's Hyperloop One and there's Hyper, Hyperloop Transport Technologies, and both of them are working to commercialize and bring this, this Hyperloop technology to reality. The original motivation for the Hyperloop was triggered by uh, the proposed high-speed rail link between San Francisco and Los Angeles, which is going to be the most expensive and slowest high-speed rail in the world. Once all the kinks are worked out, the Hyperloop is expected to be uh, safer, cheaper, and faster than any high-speed rail link. So then faster than maglev, faster than bullet trains, yeah, which is awesome. For political, economic, and kind of like game theory, you know, fun power play stuff, this makes so much sense for Russia and China to pursue Hyperloop technology um, to create their, a massive economic force to beat the US. But particularly for a country or a continent like Russia, this makes so much sense. Um, I just looked up the, the distance from the east to the west border of Russia. It's 9,000 kilometers. Now, the current proposals for the Hyperloop, that it's expected to reach a top speed of 1,200 kilometers per hour. It'll probably get faster than that in the future, but that's, that's kind of the aim at, at the moment. But that means just across Russia, you're looking at almost eight hours on a Hyperloop. So, yeah. <laughs> I'd hate to think how long that would take just on a bullet train. Okay, now, trade routes have always opened up economic opportunities for countries. You think of, like, the, uh, the Silk Road in China. You think of the Continental Railway in the US. It's, it always opens up new opportunities. The trade routes are kind of like the arteries of a nation. Um, the arteries of that little, that little hive mind, that little microcosm. And that brings about economic power and political power. GDP of the EU is about 18 trillion, the US is 16 trillion, China is roughly 10 trillion, and Russia is 2 trillion. So you can see the game theory at play. In general, it's over. You could probably say the, the US is like the innovation powerhouse, China is the manufacturing powerhouse, Russia the resource powerhouse, and the EU is the financial powerhouse. And if Russia can convince China and the EU to form a network of hyperloops between their different continents, their different economic powerhouses, that's massive. That, that turns them into a single entity. Russia can then very cheaply and with the, within the space of the day uh, ship raw resources through the Hyperloop system into the EU or into China to be manufactured into products. And since transnational trade routes require uh, trade agreements, you start moving very gradually into this idea of a political and an economic union, a Eurasian union. And then that will become a huge threat to the US because then the US's GDP will be 16 billion and Eurasian's GDP will be about 30 billion plus extra value add from this whole network. It's also very unlikely that there'll be a transatlantic hyperloop between America and Europe, or like America and China. Um, and so that intensifies things even more. It's incredibly fascinating as well, because I'm sure when Elon Musk invented the hyperloop concept, he didn't expect it would change the entire economic landscape and the power structures, um, and actually diminish the US's power and control in the world. As a side note, I think it's imperative now that Australia starts exploring hyperloop technology. Imagine if the entire continent of Australia, between all the major cities, was crisscrossed with hyperloops. It would open up the entire continent. The distance from Sydney to Perth is roughly 4,000 kilometers, um, and the travel time by air at the moment is roughly three hours. The travel time by Hyperloop would be a little bit over three hours, but it would be much cheaper. So, snappy thoughts, at future, how do you think the Hyperloop will change the landscape politically, economically, travel-wise, everything? How do you think it'll change in Australia and Eurasia?